the sensitor is a way, a way for the you to have any say in how your life will take shape in any moment, in any day. It's not natural. It's not natural to life for something to think that there is a method, a way, a practice, a controlling mechanized A to Z manual on how to live one's life. And most say, yeah, we know that. We absolutely know that. But we're going to ignore that because we have to try. So let's try and go against nature. It's not a very sensible thing to do, you know. When the tornado comes, you don't go against it. You don't walk into it. You run away from it. But this sense of control is not in a positive or a negative way. You don't run away from it. You don't run into it. You just accept it. A tornado is maybe not a great example. Because what this is about is not about trying to change any human being's way on how they perceive their self to be in control of their life. How they think there is some sort of way, some sort of perfect solution, perfect scenario, perfect, you know, scene. I want to play this scene perfectly. It is about the recognition of the body. For example, most scientists, biologists, most in medica medicine, most that investigate the human body, the cells, the anatomy, the atoms, the molecules. You sit down, you organize. Okay, I'm going to do something very simple because I can control this. I'm going to take the bus at 10 o'clock into town and I'm going to go to the bookshop and buy this particular book. That's all I'm going to do. And you, someone says, what if you missed that bus? Well, I'll catch the next bus. What if the bookshop is closed? I'll go to another bookshop. What if the other bookshop does not sell that book? Well, I'll just come home and buy it online. I'm not... I'm aware that I'm not in control of this situation. So therefore it's going to be okay if something goes wrong. The body, through that mind and that thinking mechanism, on its first stage, I'm going to catch the tentacle up bus, is already programming itself. All the molecules, atoms are preparing for this, for this plane sailing. And you've put in the second stage, I'm going to go to this particular bookshop. It's already put in this, oh, wow, it's going to be great. We're going to, molecules and atoms are all mean, yeah, we're going to get this tin clock bus. We're going to catch it, and we're going to get to this particular bookshop. And then third stage, I'm going to buy this particular book, and I'll read it on the way home. Oh, third stage, wow, this is going to be a perfect day. This is going to be a perfect day. And of course... One of these three stages go wrong. Your mind says, it's okay. I have my second plan. The molecules and atoms have heard through the mind, through the body, through that sensory emotional system that the first stage or whatever stage went wrong has went wrong. It's upset. It's now reorganizing, it's reconstructing itself. Is that? You're not going to die. But you're going to 
experience some sort of tiredness, fatigue, because the body is overacting to try and reprogram itself into that acceptance that that went wrong. The mind is accepted, yeah, not a problem. <laughs> Look, here comes it. Here comes the next bus. You know, I'm only going to be ten minutes late. But the body is not as easy as that to just simply, <laughs> ah, whatever. Well, what's the point of this, you see? The point of this is to say, we create our illness through our planning and controlling and needs and desires to, to, to be in control. The mind wants to be in control. The body's not really interested in control. It has no idea what control is. The body controls its own system. How to keep this body alive as long as possible and to maintain a quality that is maintainable with no extra energy or resources required, with no medication, with no meditation. We have two different qualities of people now. We have people who are egoistically in control and no human being is exempt from a some sort of minuscule ego control, identification of the body, identification of the world, identification of opposing values, identification of, of this and that, man and woman, as different species. Everything is dual for the ego. But the other half is seeking out of this identification. I don't want to be in control anymore. I only want to be part of this world, part of this earth. I just want to fit in. Now that's ego superseding that seeker by saying, I want to take control. Because to seek and find a way out is also a way of trying to manipulate and control a way out. I want to find enlightenment. Ego says, that's very simple. Let's look at the A to Z manual on enlightenment. I want to start by doing a meditation. Okay, what do you expect to get from that meditation? I would expect to get peace and tranquility. Okay, let's go for it. Halfway through the meditation, the phone rings. The doorbell knocks. You want a toilet. It's life saying, no, 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 even in meditation, ego wants to be part, participating, it wants to take control. So you have that ultimate seekers who are trying to take control of their own lives by finding a God to say, look, God, me and you, the rest, they're all nuts. Yeah? You've divided yourself from life to try and attach to a identification that we call God. Another identification. A, an angel comes. Oh, me and you. What do you want me to do? Identification. Life is whole. It's complete. There is no thing identified higher or lesser than anything. That's the result of not being in control, not having an ego that wants to take control, not knowing what control is. Because I don't know if I know something or I don't know something. There's no controller controlling this blurb. It's just unfolding. There's no intention, no gains. No wants, no desires, there's just life appearing in a blue t-shirt. What is it that takes control, that wants to take control, or wants to lose control? I want to lose control. I want to surrender. I want to give up. 
whatever way the seesaw goes to form human life or to soul, spirit, being life, they have to balance. And when they balance, that seats are taken away. So only the axis remains. And that axis is infinite life. You cannot find yourself within another thing, but you find yourself within everything. Who is yourself that is found within everything? No, everything is found. There is no I within everything. There is just that what is. There is no attachment to the world and there's no detachment to the world. There's no attachment to spirit. There's no detachment to spirit. There's no attachment to God. There's no detachment to God. Who is this that cannot say this or that? We're not promoting beyond human um, egoistic mind. I need, I need, this I needs egoistic mind to go and um, buy something which requires a credit card or identification. That's what we have created. That's okay. That's the way it is. We just need to take some of that ego mind and say, you know what, I'm not going to plan anything today. And that's a plan. You see, by not planning is a plan to not plan. So what is it that you have to do? You don't. There's no speaker that can tell you what to do, what non-duality is for you, what duality is for you. There's no speaker that can tell you your name, although we pretend. We conceptualize, we, we have this idea that we are one human race and we all have names beginning with A, B, C, up to Z. We have a method, we have a practice. This is a way we switch our television on and you pick up the remote and someone grabs it out of you and says, no, no, that's not the way, this is the way. And then the, the young child says, no, 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 you don't need that anymore, you just press this, you know. We are trying to establish a way that is natural to us and that's okay because that gives you some sort of sense of I'm an egoistic identifiable person. But it's a divisionistic way to say my way is different from your way. Okay, so both of these ways are ways. If the speaker says Remove the ways, my way. I'm not a seeker anymore. I'm not a person anymore. I'm not an I anymore. I'm not a me anymore. I'm not anything that the world says I am. I'm not even believing this speaker. I'm not even taking anything on board of what is taking place in this world. I'm giving it up. And in this giving up, you'll experience that profound other side down here now comes up here and it's in the balancing it's in the, the realization <laughs> what a fool what a fool I have been I has been to think that I was a person, a human body, I was going to be born and die and live through this world through people's conditioned, inherited information systems and that was all I was. But I'm also a fool to believe that the spirit, the soul, the, the emptiness, the non-dual experience would bring me closer to what is on the other side. So therefore, I surrender that too. And this surrendering both sides, you're surrendering all information, all knowledge, all knowing, all unknowing. And this is true Buddha, true balance. There is me, but there's no me. 
There is I, but there's no I. These are said simultaneously as if it's in a time sequence. There is me, there is no me. One came before the other. But we have no way other than being silent to actually project that out. Because between the me and the no me is the truth. Between the I and the no I is the truth. Between the man and the woman is the truth. Between the black and the white is the truth. Don't say grey. Okay? Don't say anything that you perceive is in the middle until you experience the middle. And what you will say is nothing. You'll say you'll say silent. You'll keep quiet. You'll just realize that wow, something is discovering something that is much more profound, deep, eloquent, tranquil, pure, and loving than both of these sides. Even the side of spirit or soul is a con. But when you say both sides are cons, there's nothing left. That what remains centered puts to sleep both of these sides to discover that what cannot be spoken. Namaste.